What's up? It's Jordan here from HardcoreMixing.com. I'm going to show you in this video my workflow for triggering drums and then uh, printing drum samples down to use in the mix. So I've got some live drums up here. Let's check them out for a minute. So I want to lay some kick and snare samples down and I'll show you how I do that. So uh, my first step is to duplicate the live kick track. And I've got active playlist selected and group assignments here. So I just want it to duplicate the actual audio region here and then the uh, the group assignment to my drums group just to make things uh, stay together nice and nice and neatly for me. And I'm going to rename this kick trigger. And to actually do the triggering, I like to use the slate trigger plugin. So we'll load that up and then I'll find one of my favorite snare or sorry kick samples here. And let's see what we got. Let's just rebalance a little bit. So we've got our kick triggering nicely there. We'll just put our high pass filter up a little bit just to make sure we're not getting any miss triggers from some sub build up or anything like that. And then I also like to reduce the dynamic range of the sample. So I usually put this down to about 50 for a kick drum. Depends on the how solid the drummer is. You can see in this session, um, all of my uh, kick hits here are pretty even so I can leave a little more dynamics in the kick if I want but I usually end up with this around 50% and that just means that the sample is going to be a little more even and consistent in volume to make up for any uh, unwanted dynamics in the live kick drum. So we've got this kick loaded up here let's maybe add another one on top just for kicks So that sounded pretty good there. So um, when I am getting ready to mix, I don't like to leave the kick sample track as, or any sample track as just a trigger like this. I like to actually bus it down and print it to an audio track. That has several advantages. Uh, number one, that just ensures that if you need to recall this mix two years from now and your system has changed, your plugins have changed, uh, software updates, whatnot, uh, or you've lost your samples that you used or moved them to somewhere else and you can't find them. Um, if you've just got this live trigger plugin going in your final mix, that's going to be a huge uh, problem later on potentially. Um, so that's one reason. And the second reason is uh, I like to just commit to sound. So I'll go through this process pretty quickly, just auditioning different kick samples, see what works best with the song. And then once I'm pretty happy with it, I'll bust it down to a track, get rid of this trigger track, and then uh, I'll just carry on with the mix. I like to commit and just keep rolling. Um, that way, you know, you don't get 80% through the mix and then start second guessing your kick sample and go back to step one you know, fiddling with your trigger and putting new kick samples in because that's just going to mess up everything that you've done uh, in the meantime. So definitely recommend printing your samples down to audio tracks and it also frees up your uh, processor and your computer um, so that if you're, you know, triggering a lot of samples, um, you don't have that contributing to your processor load in a final mix. So let's say I'm pretty happy with this uh, kick sample sound. I'm going to duplicate this again. This time I don't want the active playlist. Let's rename this JV kick. And now I need to set the output of my trigger track to a bus. So let's just choose bus 15. And then the input of my sample track also to bus 15. So we've got my kick trigger sound going out bus 15 and coming in on my new track here under bus 15. 
Let's put this volume at zero just so we get the max level here. Then all you've got to do is hit record on your new sample track and then print. I'll just stop it there just to keep this video short, but I would just let that run through the whole track. And then once it's done, you still need to go through and make sure that all these samples are lined up. You don't want there to be any discrepancy between your sample track and your live kick track. Um, it's going to make it just sound weaker. You know, if the phase is off, uh, it's not going to it's not going to punch. The low end is going to be reduced, or the high end attack is going to be uh, not quite as tight as you need to. So. While Trigger is the best plugin I've tried in terms of accuracy in triggering, it can sometimes have the odd hit that is off and you need to manually correct it. So I'll show you how I do this uh, in Pro Tools. I make sure that Tab to Transient is on here. That means that when I hit Tab, it's going to just put my cursor to the next drum hit. So we'll tap to the first hit, zoom way in. And we'll zoom in this way as well, usually about that far, and then I just am making sure that it looks like this. So you see that it's starting about the same time and then this main peak is looking exactly in position with that one. So I, then I'll just stay zoomed in and tab through all the hits here. So I'm just hitting tab going through. And these all look good. Usually in a song I might have, on a kick specifically, only a couple hits that I need to move. Snare, you can sometimes get a little more that are a little bit mistriggered. Just for uh, demonstration's sake, let's say you're tabbing through and you come to a hit that's a little bit off like that. All I do is hold shift, hit tab again to go to the next hit, and hit B to split it. So you see now I've made a split here. I'll just hit my left arrow to go back to the previous location here. So here's the sample I need to move. You can either just drag it by eye there and just try to make sure it's lined up. Or what I like to do is go up to my uh, live track here, my trigger track, tap to that transient, and then hold control and click on my sample file. And that's going to put the beginning of that region right to where my cursor is. So again, if you put your cursor somewhere, hit hold control and click on an audio file, it's going to move the start of it right to where your cursor is. So that's a quick way to really move it into position, but you can also just eyeball it like that. That's fine too. So I'll just tab through, do that for each hit that's off. Usually a pretty quick process with the Slate Trigger plugin. Like I said, it's pretty accurate. And then once that's all done, I'll just select this whole track and, con and consolidate it, and it's ready to go, and I can just get rid of the Kick Trigger track. My process is basically the same for snare, so we'll duplicate the snare top track. Let's just move it down. The only difference is this time I'm loading up the mono to stereo version of Trigger, because usually with snare I'm using samples that have some room sound that is stereo in them, so rather than outputting a mono signal, I want to output a stereo signal. All right, so let's load up one of my snare samples here. Again, I'll usually bring the dynamics down a little bit. It depends on the drummer and the tracks that you're working with. Often what I'll do is I'll do one pass with really reduced dynamics because I just want to get a bunch of really hard snare hits down. And then if there's any fills that need a little more dynamics, I'll just crank this back up to maybe 100% and then go through again and just punch in on the specific drum fills to record uh, those over top of uh, the hard samples that I just laid in. I'll show you an example of that before we uh, finish up here. So again, basically all I'm going to do is create a new track. Remember this needs to be stereo. We'll call it JV Snare. And let's rename uh, this duplicate to Snare Trigger as well. Let's put the output to bus 1 and 2. And we want to record it to our new track. Let's bring the dynamics down a little bit here so we get some hard hits all the way through. And 
like I said, for some fills that need to be more dynamic, I'll put this back up and then I'll just punch in where we need to. So right at the beginning here, we have a little fill. I don't want those all to be, you know, really hard uh, hits since that's a faster fill. So let's just punch that in there. And I was just using the punch in and out uh, buttons on my keyboard to, to record and then punch out there. All right, so that's how I would do it for the whole song. I get hard hits first, go back, punch in any uh, fills with a little more dynamics. And then just like the kick, I just want to tap through and make sure all of the hits are lined up. So let's zoom in again. See how this one is a little bit late. So we'll split that again, like I said. I just tap to the next transient hit split on the keyboard, which is B. And then I'll drag this back so it starts at the same point here. Now, since you move that back, you're going to have a little bit of a gap. You can just drag that over and crossfade. Or what I like to do if I have to chop up a lot of hits, I'll just uh, use Beat Detective, select the whole track, and hit Edit Smoothing, and that will fill and crossfade for me. But that's the ba basic idea, just tabbing through, making sure everything's lined up. We'll go through the whole song like that. And that's all there is to it. Now I've got my kick and snare samples printed here to audio tracks. Now I always have those samples baked into the session and I won't go back and second guess myself. I'll just keep mixing from this point forward. Get rid of that trigger track. And there we go. Drum samples laid in just the same way that you would work with the live tracks. It's much easier for mixing. Keeps you on the right track. Keeps you from second guessing and make sure that you are bulletproof against any... Uh, future recalls that might be messed up uh, if you keep the live trigger tracks on for your final mix. And actually, there's one other benefit I didn't mention. You know, if you just have the live uh, trigger track on there, for one thing, you might have hits that are triggering a little bit off and, you know, compromising the punch of your samples when it's mixing with the live drums. And also, every time you make a revision to the mix, it's going to be slightly different uh, because it's just randomizing the samples. So you're going to have a slightly different mix every time you do a revision, which is not good. You want it to be exactly the same. Just one more reason to, to take this approach. I highly recommend it. Um, I'm still using an older version of Pro Tools, so there might be different track freeze uh, functions in your DAW or new, newer versions of Pro Tools that uh, I haven't had a chance to try out yet that might make this a little quicker. But uh, the principle is the same which is to audition some samples, choose what you're going to use, and bust it down to an audio track. So that's my workflow. That's what I recommend doing with any of the hardcore mixing drum samples that you pick up from my online store. They come with trigger format downloads, so you can load them right into trigger very easily. And also the WAV files, if you're using uh, any, any different trigger plugin, you can load them up there as well. All right, hope that helped. Check out hardcoremixing.com for more tips and to check out some of the uh, drum samples that I was just using in this example video. All right, talk soon.